the first practical in instrumental method of analysis for the seventh semester. The aim is determination of absorption maxima and effect of solvent on absorption maxima of organic compound. So we have got two different aim in one single practical. First we will talk how we will determine the absorption maxima of any given organic compound with the help of UV spectrophotometry. Now as far as the term is concerned what is absorption maxima that we will see first as the principle or the term should be known ki what is meant by absorption maxima. Now absorption maxima when we actually record the spectrum suppose this is a generalized spectrum if we get of this sort here we have absorbance scale here we have wavelength in nanometers now this point or we can say the absorption maxima is the highest point in the spectrum showing the maximum absorbance it is the highest point or the peak where the substance exhibit the highest absorption when scanned in the range of 400 to 200 nanometer in the UV range and the absorption maxima may shift or may differ for the same solute depending on the solvent involved in the process or in preparation of the solution for that particular compound. Same compound or in other words same compound may exhibit two different uh, lambda max values in solvents of different polarity or if we change the pH or the ionic strength of uh, the solvent it may be possible the absorption maximum of the same compound may get altered. Okay. So how we usually select or how we go and why this particular compound is exhibiting suppose in this type of pattern. So for any organic compound to get absorbed in the UV region the most important thing is the, uh, the solubility is to be known so that we can have the selection of solvent. Another thing the compound should be capable of uh, absorbing the light which depends on the chromophore or the oxochrome present within the molecule and chromophores are actually responsible for absorption of light whenever the sample is dissolved in any particular solvent and it is recorded to so whatever the peak we actually see is responsible because of the electronic system involved in that chromophore now the electronic system can be the sigma pi or n electron but since sigma to sigma star transitions are not usually seen in the room temperature so suppose if i consider this as a metformin and the metformin in distilled water exhibits the lambda max value as 242 or 243 nanometer as stated in the uh, standard books so if we consider this as the spectra of metformin we should know why this particular compound is exhibiting is at this particular site so in general we can say the compounds which usually show high absorption values are usually associated with the pi to pi star transitions taking place within the structure of the molecule and if any peak is obtained uh, beyond 300 or beyond 290 usually associated with the n electrons or the presence of odd atom within the structure that could be nitrogen that could be oxygen that could be sulfur which is actually present and they possess the non-bonding electron which undergo transition from non-bonding ground state orbital to the pi star transition or the anti-bonding orbital so usually we focus mainly at room temperature either of these two transitions which may occur uh, and whatever the value we usually see or whatever the recording we are seeing we get a continuous spectrum and the continuous spectrum is because the electronic energy or the energy of UV light which is involved causes all the changes within the molecule it could be translational, vibrational, rotational everything is involved and uh, the continuous spectra is 
seen because all the vibrational and rotational spectra are within one electronic level are present there but they are not seen uh, separately in uv because the energy is so high that we actually see only uh, see the electronic uh, transitions and electronic energy is having high power so we always get the continuous spectrum in the uv region whenever we try to record the spectra or whenever we try to record the absorption maxima now the solubility is uh, the another important aspect ki the solvent should be selected based on the solubility of the drug if it is freely soluble we should opt that drug it could be water it could be any polar solvent it could be any buffer so the selection of solvent is to be done keeping in mind the solubility of the drug and stability of the drug ki it should be stable in that particular solution so that after determining the absorption maxima we can go for the further experimentation process now how to determine the absorption maxima using the spectrophotometer usually nowadays the spectrum recording option is already available with the double beam spectrophotometer where we have to scan uh, again the sample solution against the blank or the solvent which we have taken and the recording is done but if we go back to little bit previous slide we can also record this uh, without having the spectra we can record the absorbance of the solution at an interval of 10 say or 20 nanometer we record the absorbance of the solution and plot those lines similarly if suppose we are getting the absorbance accordingly if suppose this is we can by free hand drawing we can join all these points so we may have around 10 points if we go by this particular method of determining the lambda max now whatever the lambda max is exhibited by the spectrophotometer should also be same if we are trying to construct or if we are trying to draw with the help of these various points uh, of absorption against the wavelength taken at an interval of either 10 to 20 nanometer as per our convenience and we draw all those lines against this graph in a calibration in a graph paper and then we freehand drawing we can join all those points and whatever the highest point is obtained should be similar to the point which is obtained in the spectro photo so we talked the first part of the A now we will talk regarding the effect of solvent on absorption maximum of organic compound so how solvent can affect the uh, absorption maximum of organic compound if we take the example of say phenol consider taking example of phenol to understand the effect of solvent on absorption maximum of phenol now phenol structurally phenol is this now the chromophoric part of this particular phenol is this this is considered to be the oxochrome, att oxochrome attached on the uh, benzene structure now this is phenol now if this particular phenolic solution in appropriate concentration specifically 0.002% weight by volume solution if we prepare 0.002% weight by volume solution of phenol in water and in cyclohexane now what the solvent I have selected one is from the aqueous side or the polar and another is an organic solvent so if we see the difference in the dielectric constant exists between both of this and in otherwise we can call this as a polar solvent this as a non-polar solvent so what is the effect of uh, this solvent if we take phenol in water or if we take phenol in cyclohexane what is the difference what happens to the uh, absorption maxima of this particular uh, phenolic structure if I take say for example in water and try to draw or try to record the absorbance of this particular phenol 
I will be getting a continuous spectrum of phenol having a specific lambda max value in this particular uh, polar solvent because what happens when phenol is dissolved in a polar solvent whatever the fine structures which a molecule is bound to exhibit are not seen because of the polarity of the solvent or interaction with the solvent or due to the polar nature of the solvent all fine structures which can be exhibited by this molecule are not seen and we get a continuous uh, spectrum for phenol in water in other words if in other solution when we prepare phenol of this same concentration 0.002% in weighed by volume solution in cyclohexane the difference in the structure we can see from the experiment and the recording what we get uh, I will specifically draw the spectrum of phenol which is obtained in water this is the spectra which is obtained in water now in cyclohexane if I will be trying to record the spectra is bound to appear in this form now if we see the absorption maxima here in phenol that if we see the phenolic structure if we see this particular the spectrum is continuous without much difference in the values and we have to locate specifically the absorption maxima at this point because this can also be acting as a uh, point this is also a point but when we shift from polar to a non-polar solvent whatever the fine structures are exhibited by the molecule due to the vibrational and rotational motion or uh, can be seen very clearly in the spectrum and if you see we have a prominent band or prominent peaks which are uh, seen in the structure of phenol when we record it in the cyclohexane and this specific pattern we call it or we uh, lower this correlate this particular structure with the presence of this benzonoid form which has got a typical uh, benzonoid peaks which are being exhibited specifically in the range of 230 to 270 nanometer which we are unable to see in the polar solvent so this is one effect of solvent where fine structures exhibited by the molecule are not seen in the spectra of uh, any particular organic compound this can happen with any other substance also now again if I take the solvent in terms of difference in pH or if I try to take the effect of uh, the pH of the solvent if suppose I am taking two different pH values one is say in HCl and another is pH in uh, solution in NOS so what is the effect of difference in pH or, or the environment of the solvent in terms of pH if I take this same example the difference can be noted and what happens that we will see this is NOH in HCl acidic media this is NOH in basic media now what has happened here is if we try to see or analyze the structural changes which are occurring in the acidic media or in the basic media since phenol is weakly acidic in nature there is no change in its structure or there is no formation or there is no loss of hydrogen from this particular molecule so phenol being acidic in nature in acidic solvent remains as such and lambda max will be similar to what is nearly seen in the water but and if I talk in terms of the effect of this change in the structural pattern though so if we dissolve phenol in sodium hydroxide then we see if phenol very easily donates hydrogen in from its structure and resulting into the formation of phenolate ion and phenolate ion 
when we try to record the uh, spectra of this the phenolate ion is showing hyperchromic effect a hyperchromic effect means increase in the intensity of absorption uh, because of the solvent ph there is change in the structure of the phenol which changes to phenolate ion and due to the formation of this phenolate ion the uh, extension of conjugation is taking place up to this particular point from the ring it has extended up to this area so we see the hyperchromic effect means increase in absorption but this will not show any hyperchromic effect because structure of the phenol remains the same similarly if we try to go with say aniline so aniline in HCl and aniline in NaOH Now what happens here is since this is basic in nature in NaOH aniline does not undergo any chemical changes there is no such uh, changes occurring in the oxochromic part but when, a, when it is present in HCl since it is basic it tries to get protonated to a, from the solvent it gets H plus ion and it is converted into any linium ion now any linium ion jo hai, if we see this what happens with, due to the formation of anilinium ion the oxochromic effect of the amino group which was attached to this benzene part is lost because this is not in a position to exhibit the n to pi transition which is usually associated with the aniline because here amino group is free or the lone pair of electrons are free to uh, show the presence of n to pi transition but here if we go with this structure due to formation of this ionic species ns3 or protonated species this group has lost its oxochromic effect and the spectra will be almost similar or it is it will be looking similar to that of the benzene but the difference will be obviously there so this is what is again another example of the effect of ph of solvent where molecule if it is having any ionizable group or protonable group they will undergo the changes in the respective solvent leading to either hypochromic effect or here we can call it it could be uh, here we observed hyperchromic here it could be hypochromic or we can even see the shift in the lambda max that could be uh, we can call it as a hypsochromic effect if we go with any other example it can lead to the bathochromic shift so there are lot of examples we can quote accordingly because whatever oxochrome is present if it is undergoing some structural changes then it is bound to show some or the other effect in a particular solvent so it becomes very important to have the idea what the behavior of the solute will be in a particular solvent so the choice of solvent is the most important aspect in this particular key whatever the solvent we are choosing there should not be such behavior and if such behavior is taking place we should be able to recognize from the observations which will be we will be recording or which we will see when we will be carrying out the uh, readings of that particular solution i will show you the graphs whatever we have talked here that will be practically observed the phenol in water will be showing such, uh, such spectra in cyclohexane will be exhibiting such type of spectra this we can check by taking the example of phenol whether there is change in absorbance or hyperchromic effect is seen or not